Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 237. Oh, may we be still and seek him. Seek with consecration whole, listening thus to hear the message, far from sense and hid in soul. Hymn number 237. The scriptural this morning will be given by Shahidat from Maryland. Good morning, I'll read from the King James Bible, Psalm 16. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord, my goodness extended not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. Their sorrow shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reigns also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore.
we will now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in, in earth as, as it is in, in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's sing hymn number 64. From sense to soul my pathway lies before me. From mist and shadow into truth's clear day, the dawn of all things real is breaking o'er me. My heart is singing, I have found the way. Hymn number 64.
Welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We have members and participants from around the world. And you can find us on our website, plainfieldcs.com. You can also find us on YouTube, SoundCloud, Facebook, and Twitter, and someday maybe others. We conduct services every Sunday morning, beginning at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion. And we have a testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 8.15, where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives changed through the study and practice of Christian science. And you can listen to all of our services either on our website or on YouTube or from your telephone via teleconference number that we provide. Also on Sundays at 11 a.m., we have a Sunday school class for children of all ages. And that class is also available via teleconference. So if you don't live in the area and have a child who would like to attend a Christian Science Sunday School, please contact the church and we'll give you the number and your child will be very welcome. <clears throat> and for all of our services, we have a nursery available for infants and toddlers. So bring the whole family. Next Saturday at 10 a.m., we will have another Bible study class. And the questions for that class will be on our website shortly. So please join us for a rousing Bible study session next Saturday at 10 a.m. Everyone is welcome here. And that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. We will now have the reading of a testimony from the chapter entitled Fruitage in Science and Health, which attests to the healing power obtained from just reading the Christian Science textbook. And here to give us that reading is Craig from New Jersey. Page 643 six of Science and Health, Chapter Fruitage. Grateful for moral and spiritual awakening. About four years ago, after I tried different ways and means to be relieved from bodily suffering, a faithful friend called my attention to the teaching of Christian science. After some opposition, I decided to investigate it and with the thought that it, if this teaching would be helpful, it was meant for me as well as for others. If it did not afford any help, I could put it aside again, but that I would find out and be convinced. After I read Mrs. Eddy's work, Science and Health, a few days, I found, all, I found that my ailments had disappeared and a rest had come to me which I had never before known. I had smoked almost incessantly, although I had often determined to use my willpower and never smoke again, but had always failed. This desire, as well as the desire to drink, simply disappeared, and I wish to say here that I received all these benefits before I had gained much understanding of what I was reading. Like a prisoner who had been in chains for years, I was suddenly set free. I did not know then how the chain had been removed, but I had to acknowledge that it came through the reading of this book. I then felt an ardent desire to read more and to know what this power was that had freed me in, in a few days of that which I had been trying for years to shake off and failed. It then became clear to me that this was a truth which Jesus Christ taught and preached to free humanity almost 2,000 years ago. It did not, however, occur to me to apply it in my business affairs on the contrary, I first thought that if I continued in my study, I would have to retire from business. This did not happen. However, I gradually found that the little understanding of this wonderful teaching, which I had acquired, became a great help to me in my business. I became more friendly, more honest, 
more loving to my fellow man. And I also acquired better judgment and was able to do the right thing at the right time. As, re- as a natural result, my business improved. Before I knew anything of Christian science, my business had often been a burden to me. Fear and worry deprived me of my rest. How different it is now. Through the study of the Bible, which now possesses immeasurable treasures for me in our textbook, Science and Health, and the other works of our leader, I receive peace and confidence in God, that insight into character which is necessary for the correct management of any business. W.H.H. Bloomfield, Nebraska. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page 14 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, Soul. Golden text, First Chronicles. Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Responsive reading, Psalms. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Fairly from Maryland will read from the Bible. The Holy Bible. Psalms. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Deuteronomy. If from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. If thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swear unto them. Unto thee it was showed that thou mightest know that the Lord he is God, there is none else beside him. Out of heaven he made thee to hear his voice, that he might instruct thee. Second Chronicles. Abijah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. And Asa, his son, reigned in his stead. In his days the land was quiet ten years. And Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. For he took away the altars of the strange gods and the high places and brake down the images and cut down the groves and commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers and to do the law and the commandment. And there came out against them Zerah the Ethiopian, with an host of a thousand and three hundred chariots, and came unto Marisha. Then Asa went out against him, 
and they set the battle in array in the valley of Zephatha at Marisha. And Asa cried unto the Lord his God and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on thee. And in thy name we go against this multitude. O Lord, thou art our God. Let not man prevail against thee. So the Lord smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. And Asa and the people that were with him pursued them unto Jirah, and the Ethiopians were overthrown that they could not recover themselves, for they were destroyed before the Lord and before his host. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Odit. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while ye be with him. And if ye seek him, he will be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. Now for a long season Israel has been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and saw him, he was found of them. And in those times there was no peace to him that went out nor to him that came in. But great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries and nation was destroyed of nation, and city of city. So they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem, and they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul, that whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death whether small or great, whether man or woman. And they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpets and with cornets. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire, and he was found of them. And the Lord gave them rest round about. And there was no more war unto the five and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa. Amos. For thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek ye me, and ye shall live. Seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion and turneth the shadow of death into the morning that strengtheneth the spoiled against the strong so that the spoiled shall come against the fortress. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. Seek good and not evil that ye may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you as ye have spoken. Hate the evil and love the good and establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. Psalms. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment. And the meek will he teach his way. 
All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. Florence from Georgia will now read. I will read correlative passages from our textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. The divine mind is the soul of man and gives man dominion over all things. Soul has infinite resources with which to bless mankind, and happiness would be more readily attained and would be more secure in our keeping if sought in soul. Dost thou love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind? This command includes much even the surrender of all merely material sensation, affection, and worship. This is the El Dorado of Christianity. It involves the science of life and recognizes only the divine control of spirit in which soul is our master and material sense and human will have no place. In the material world, God has brought to light with great rapidity many useful wonders. With like activity have thought swift pinions been rising towards the realm of the real, to the spiritual sense of those lower things which gives impulse to inquiry. Belief in a material basis from which may be deduced all rationality, is slowly yielding to the idea of a metaphysical basis, looking away from matter to mind as the cause of every effect. Materialistic hypotheses challenge metaphysics to meet in final combat. Human philosophy has made God manlike. Christian science makes man godlike. The first is error, the latter is truth. Metaphysics is above physics, and matter does not enter into metaphysical premises or conclusions. The categories of metaphysics rest on one basis, the divine mind. Metaphysics resolves things into thoughts and exchanges the objects of sense for the ideas of soul. These ideas are perfectly real and tangible to spiritual consciousness, and they have this advantage over the objects and thoughts of material sense. They are good and eternal. Soul and matter are at variance from the very necessity of their opposite natures. Mortals are unacquainted with the reality of existence because matter and mortality do not reflect the facts of spirit. Spiritual vision is not subordinate to geometric altitudes. Whatever is governed by God is never for an instant deprived of the light and might of intelligence and life. Physical sensation, not soul, produces material ecstasy and emotion. 
if spiritual sense always guided men, there would grow out of ecstatic moments a higher experience and a better life with more devout self-abnegation and purity. A self-satisfied ventilation of fervent sentiment never makes a Christian. God is not influenced by man. The divine ear is not an auditory nerve. It is the all-hearing and all-knowing mind to whom each need of man is always known and by whom it will be supplied. Should we implore, <clears throat> should we implore a corporeal God to heal the sick out of his personal volition? Or should we understand the infinite divine principle which heals? If we rise no higher than blind faith, the science of healing is not attained, and soul existence in the place of sense existence is not comprehended. We apprehend life in divine science only as we live above corporeal sense and correct it. Our proportionate admission of the claims of good or of evil, determines the harmony of our existence, our health, our longevity, and our Christianity. We cannot serve two masters, nor perceive divine signs with the material senses. Drugs and hygiene cannot successfully usurp the place and power of the divine source of all health and perfection. If God made man both good and evil, man must remain thus. What can improve God's work? Again, an error in the premise must appear in the conclusion. To have one God and avail yourself of the power of spirit, you must love God supremely. With the physical senses, the strict demands of Christian science seem preemptory. But mortals are hastening to learn that life is God good and that evil has in reality neither place nor power in the human or the divine economy. The devotion of thought to an honest achievement makes the achievement possible. Exceptions only confirm this rule, proving that failure is occasioned by a too feeble faith. Beholding the infinite tax of truth we pause, wait on God. Then we push onward until boundless thought walks enraptured and conception unconfined is winged to reach the divine glory. In order to apprehend more, we must put into practice what we already know. We must recollect that truth is demonstrable when understood and that good is not understood until demonstrated. If faithful over a few things, we shall be made rulers over many. But the one unused talent decays and is lost. When the sick or the sinning awake to realize their need of what they have not, they will be receptive of divine science, which gravitates towards soul and away from material sense, who removes thought from the body and elevates even mortal mind to the contemplation of something better than disease or sin. True idea of God is the true understanding of life and love, 
robs the grave of victory, takes away all sin and the delusion that there are other minds and destroys mortality. The effects of Christian science are not so much seen as felt. It is the still small voice of truth uttering itself. We are either turning away from this utterance or we are listening to it and going up higher. Truth will at length compel us all to exchange the pleasures and pains of sense for the joys of soul. Let us now have a moment of silent prayer for our world. Let's now sing hymn number 133. I cannot always trace the way where thou, Almighty One, dost move, but I can always, always say that God is love. Hymn number 133.
against a wall that I cannot break through. Let's do it one more time. One more time. Ready? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and do your regular intro. Okay. I am up against a wall that I cannot break through Built up bricks of shame and mortar of guilt Things I've said and done or didn't say and do I can see a way for me to be free from despair don't remember how to open my heart Once a heart of flesh But now a stone is there But the truth is God is almighty The truth is He will restore you Enlightening all of the dark places in your vision. For God is infinite, holy, and you are his likeness only. He'll write all wrongs you've imagined. We will now sing hymn number 374. We thank thee and we bless thee, O Father of us all, 
that e'en before we ask thee, thou hearest thy children's call. We praise thee for thy goodness and tender, constant care. We thank thee, Father, Mother, that thou hast heard our prayer. Hymn number 374. Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passage, 1 John, 3rd chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation. For God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material, he is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is, and every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father in truth and love. Amen. <laughs> 